Hey guys, Will here. So today we're taking a look at two very interesting sets of pedals out of France. These are the Venom A-Track pedals, available as a steel and aluminium construction, as we see here, or a carbon fiber construction, as we see on my left-hand side. So today we're gonna to be unpacking these in all their detail and figuring out whether these are the right pedal set for you. So let's get started. Okay, so we've got a lot of things to go through today, starting off with some quick housekeeping information. So firstly, as always, a big thank you to Venom for sending these pedals through to us to check out for today's video. Now, if you do decide you wanna pick up any of these pedals, we don't have any sort of relationship with Venom directly. You can purchase these directly through Venom if you wish to do so. We do, however, have a couple of affiliate options here available for you if you do wanna support our work here at Boosted Media through some of our reseller partners. So there'll be some links down in the description below. If you do decide to make a purchase using those links, then a small percentage of the profits comes through to us here at Boosted Media to help out with the costs of running this channel. So we really do appreciate your support there. Just so you guys are aware as well, we do also have a 5% discount code available for Race Anywhere. All the details down in the description below. And I should also mention as well, we will be making some direct comparisons against some other manufacturers' pedals in today's video too. We do also have affiliate options available for those too. So if you want to pick up anything else that you see in today's video, there's some links down below for those as well. So let's dive into these pedals today. There's a lot of things to go through. Let's start off with the aluminium version. We'll do a bit of a comparison between the two here, let you know a bit of information around pricing. Then we'll dig deeper into the construction, how everything works, the adjustability, and then of course the driving experience after that. So there is quite a large price difference between, or price delta between the aluminium and steel version and the carbon fiber version. All the prices that we're discussing here are taken directly off the Venom website. You do also need to, of course, factor in shipping and any sorts of taxes that may be incurred on top of that too. So if you are comparing pricing, just make sure that you factor in those things as well as where you are in the world and what uh, reseller might suit you best for your particular location. So let's go through the complete pricing breakdown now because there's a lot of different configurations and options which you can add or or choose to not add when you order these pedals. So we have the Atrax version, which is the steel and aluminium, and then you've got the Black Widow version, as they name it on their website, which is essentially the same pedals in terms of their functionality, but in a carbon fiber finish. And we'll obviously go through exactly what the differences are between the two as we progress through today's video. But starting with the most basic configuration, the throttle and brake pedal on their own comes in at, and we're talking about Euro here, 499.92. The clutch add-on pedal, if you choose to buy that separately later on is 166.58. If you buy it as a three pedal set out of the gate, you're looking at 624.92. Now in terms of add-ons for the pedals, you also have the option of a laser cut steel shroud, which sits over the top of each of the pedals. And then if you want to, you can also add a little LED strip and that reacts to either your pedal inputs or telemetry data coming out of the SIM, depending on how you configure it. But we'll talk about that later on as well. So if you do decide you want those covers, you're looking at an additional 30 euro. If you decide you want the covers with with the LED strips, you can't buy the LED strips just on their own from what I can tell. You're looking at 66 euro. Then you're probably also gonna wanna buy at least the base plate. And we'll explain the reasons why that is a little bit later on today. Uh, so you're looking at 90 euro for the aluminum base plate. And then if you want the heel wedge that you see here as well, that comes in an additional 20 euro on top of that too. Then in addition to that too, you also have the option for some custom laser engraving on the side of the pedal arms. That is an additional 10 euro. And then if you want a logo, etched on the pedal face too, that is an additional 20 euro. So the configuration that you see here comes in at 810.92 euro. That is compared to the 624.92 starting price. Then on top of that as well, you have the option for a weaker and stronger elastomer set for the brake pedal that comes in at 55 euro. And then finally, you also have the option to change out the springs on the throttle and clutch should you wish to do so. And those are 19 euro each. So the maximum total price that you can pay for absolutely all the bells and whistles is 923.92 for the Atrax aluminum and steel. And they also have a variety of different color schemes available. You've probably already seen that in some other reviews. I just opted for the nice clean black look with these particular pedals. But yeah, plenty of options there. Definitely check out the website for all the details on that. So I hope you've got all that. Let's move across to the Black Widow carbon version now. So the two pedal set, we're looking at a price of 749.17 compared to the 499.92 for the aluminum and steel version. So quite a large price delta between the carbon 
and the aluminium version. I'm not gonna go through and compare every single price, otherwise we'll be here all day, but just to give you a idea of the price delta between the two. So if you want the three pedal set, you're looking at 1,040, 83. Uh, the little heel wedges that you see here are 105 euro. The base plate, exactly the same base plate as we saw before, that is 90 euro. You have the same option for all the replacement springs and elastomers as we already talked about. Then you can also configure these with the same metal shrouds that we saw for the Atrax paddles for the same price, 66 euro with the LED strips. And then if you decide you want these carbon fiber shrouds and LED strips, which we will talk about later on too, because they are quite flimsy as you can see there, really wasn't impressed with the quality for the price. They come in at a whopping 329 euro just for those carbon fiber shrouds and the LED strip. To put that in perspective, that is actually more expensive than a set of Fnatic V2 CSL Elite pedals in their entirety. So very, very, very expensive configuration as we have it here. The total price as we have it sitting here is uh, 1,564.83 euro. Uh, the max total configuration with all the elastomer kits and springs, as we discussed before, would come in at 1,657.83. So it really does add up very quickly if you look at all of these. But we're gonna talk about the differences between the carbon fiber and aluminum version as we get on through today's video. So despite the difference in appearance between the carbon fiber and the aluminum slash steel version of these pedals and the massive delta in price between the two, the uh, actual driving experience is pretty much exactly the same between the two of them. Although there is one very important thing that I wanna point out straight away here because obviously, you know, comparing 1,040 euro to 624 euro is a massive step up in price for the carbon fiber pedals. So what I would say is unless you absolutely love the look of the carbon fiber pedals, then there is absolutely no reason to upgrade to these ones. In fact, I wouldn't say that it's an upgrade in terms of the driving experience. It's actually a downgrade. And the reason I say that is if we have a look at these arms here, we can see there's actually quite a lot of twist in those pedals, probably most exaggerated there, you can see on the throttle pedal. So that twist is partly the pedal face itself, but also just the arm coming up. So you can see how much that is able to twist underneath my, well, even just with my hand, you can imagine with the foot and you'll see that later on when we're driving. But if we compare that to the aluminum and steel version, now the upright or the pedal arm is aluminum here, cast aluminum, but the pad itself is actually steel. And you can see there's well, there's no flex there at all with my bare hands. It might, might be a little bit underfoot, but yeah. So straight away, you can see there is a market difference between the uh, amount of flex on the carbon fiber versus the aluminum version. So spending an extra 400 euro on the carbon fiber version just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, to be honest with you guys. Now, there's a couple of other little observations there too when it comes to the carbon fiber. So what I was hoping for was that it would be a you know completely carbon fiber construction or something like that. Underneath this shell, it's actually exactly the same cage and assembly as what we have on the steel and aluminum version. And then if we have a look here, you can see just how flimsy these covers are. Now I did ask about the uh, specs on the carbon fiber. They told me that these covers are two layers of 200 gram per meter square carbon fiber. The uh, pedal faces, uh, one layer of 200 gram per square meter for the aesthetic or the uh, the front layer or the top layer, and then two layers of uh, 800 gram per square meter structural carbon fiber behind that. So it ends up being about three millimeters thick for the face, exactly the same as what we have for the uh, steel ones on the steel and aluminum version. And then the pedal uprights themselves, as you saw before, with the amount of flex that those have in them, those are again one layer of 200 GSM carbon fiber for aesthetics and then a structural, uh, what is it, four layers of 800 GSM. And then for the brake pedal, you can see that's actually quite a bit thicker there. There's an additional two layers of 800 GSM carbon fiber for the brake pedal. So you can see that is quite thick, but despite that, there is still quite a lot of flex there. Now you guys can go and have a look at footage yourselves of some you know, real life racing car drivers driving with carbon fiber pedals. There is a little bit of flex there, at least it seems in the footage that I've seen, particularly Lando Norris footage, you can see there's quite a bit of movement there. But the difference there is that, you know, there's a lot of G-forces going on in that car. In a simulator, obviously you don't have those forces acting upon you. So to me, you know, that's more flex than I would wanna have for the amount of money that I'm spending on a set of pedals like this. So yeah, look, honestly, I think 
we can discount the carbon fiber version as being a, uh, a, a product that I would recommend personally, particularly when we've got the aluminum and steel version right here, which is superior in terms of its strength and rigidity and comes in at way, way, way less than the cost of the carbon fiber set. But they do look really cool. And you know, maybe the looks are enough to sway you in the direction of the carbon fiber. Now, one other issue that we did run into as well with the carbon fiber shrouds is that they're not machined or cut out to the uh, right shape either. So when we pushed down on the brake pedal, it was actually catching on the corner here and actually pulling the carbon fiber up. I actually get, had to get a file and file that down to uh, make it not rub. So yeah, for me at least, not the kind of thing that you wanna come up against when you're spending 1,040 euro on a set of pedals. So let's focus in now a little bit more on the mechanical design of these pedals. We'll start off with the throttle pedal. So I'm gonna spin it around this way so you guys can see a little bit better what's going on here. So all three of the pedals are using a load cell to detect the amount of force being applied to the pedal. Now in the case of the throttle and clutch, obviously that is being translated across to pedal positions. So what there is, is a little tiny spring underneath here. And we're gonna talk about this in detail in just a minute because we did have a very significant issue with the throttle pedal specifically on this particular pedal. So much so that we did actually have to get them to send us across a replacement pedal. So I'm actually gonna just pop these down on the floor for a moment and let's just have a closer look at this guy in situ. So what's happening is you've got on, this, on the underside here a little one kilogram load cell. That is essentially a strain gauge. So as we push down on the pedal, you can see the little tiny spring internally exerts a force upon that load cell. The two halves of that load cell then deflect and that deflection is what's detected by the strain gauge as our pedal position. So obviously the amount of force being exerted on the strain gauge is relative to the amount that that pedal is being pushed down. Now the issue that we had, if I grab the other set back up again here quickly, what was happening was this spring was just falling out completely on its own. So we can see if I actually pull the pedal back a little bit and then push it down again, it comes out of its alignment. And that means that there's a massive amount of inconsistency in the amount of force that's being exerted on that load cell. And then ultimately what would happen is as you were driving, that would fall out completely. And then suddenly your throttle just stops working entirely. Now, the way that works, as you can see underneath here, there's actually a little cam lobe, for want of a better word, on the bottom of that pivot point. And that is what essentially works as a bump stop. So on the replacement pedal that they sent, they actually moved the location of that little cam to stop the pedal from coming so far forward on its return, and that keeps that spring seated. And that does work, but that comes at the cost of a greatly restricted amount of throw in the pedal. So we've actually adjusted the throw adjustment here to the maximum amount. And you can see here how differently they sit next to each other. So the throttle pedal on the original actually sat a little bit further forward than the brake and the clutch if you have them in their minimum adjustment position down here. Now you can tilt the pedals up and down along this axis here. But then if you look at the amount of throw that we have here, that is set to the maximum and you've got a good amount of throw, if anything, a little bit too much throw there for me subjectively. But then if we put the replacement throttle there next to it, very, very, very short amount of throw even with the maximum setting. Now, I don't know exactly what the deal is there. I did talk to them about it. They said, just adjust the uh, throw adjustment here to the maximum and it'll be fine. But even for me on the maximum setting, that is nowhere near enough throw. Now, if we go across to the carbon fiber pedals, which didn't have that issue, that is the amount of throw that we have there. And that is as it should be for me. So I think that there's something going on there with the original throttle that they sent us and potentially the replacement that they sent us to. Uh, two issues there. Now there was one other issue that we came across with the throttle pedal as well, just while we're here looking at the steel version. The little uh, optional steel shroud, which sits on top. What we also found is that was actually snagging on the spring too. So what would happen is it would hit, hit in there. You can see again, that's just fallen out, but yeah, that entire assembly's actually fallen out of its uh, out of its groove now. But when it's in there, what was happening is that spring was actually binding up against the metal here and making a horrible pinging sound every time you push down the pedal. So yeah, there were a lot of issues with this initial pedal. Most of them did seem to be resolved on the replacement, but then we had that really, really short throw. So uh, yeah, look, we did do the majority of our driving testing with the original pedal, but I did of course test out with the replacement. And then we did a bunch of driving on the carbon fiber, which you'll see later on in the video too. But yeah, with that spring popping out all the time, definitely, uh, definitely some issues 
going on there. No such issues with the clutch pedal. This is pretty much exactly the same design in terms of how it detects the uh, pedal position. It's got the same one kilogram load cell in there. Got the same adjustment there for pedal throw too. No issues with this one. But then on the back here, you can see this assembly, pretty familiar for those of you who have seen reviews of a lot of Husingvelt pedals, for example. As you push the clutch down, what happens is that pops up and that gives you the sensation of a friction point on the clutch pedal. And it actually works really well on this particular clutch pedal. One of the better ones that I've felt. Doesn't have any adjustment there in terms of the amount of uh, rollover effects like you get with the Husingvelt pedals. So it doesn't have the ability to fine tune it like you do with those. But with the default setting out of the box, it does actually have a really, really good feel to it. So yeah, look, overall, again, driving experience really good and you'll see that later on. But just build quality wise, I feel like there's a couple of things that need to be improved here. Now, while we're still talking about adjustments here too, I should also mention that on the back of the pedals here, you can see some screw holes that allows us to raise or lower the pedal faces and also move them or offset them from side to side too. Now, of course, being freestanding pedals, which are individually mounted, you can also move them around on the base plate. You can see there's plenty of cutout here on the base plate. If I spin that around, you'll be able to see a little bit better. What we did find though, is because of the arrangement of these things, even though it looks like there's a huge scope of movement available, if you wanna have the heel plate mounted, plus also have the pedals there, there's not a whole lot of scope of movement around. You can see how cluttered that gets pretty quickly. Now, another thing I wanna mention there with regards to mounting as well, is you can see on the back of the pedals there, it is quite tricky to get underneath there and actually mount things in. You can imagine if this was bolted to your rig already, it's uh, almost impossible. And I remember when Tom actually mounted these up on the rig, it took him, I wanna say nearly 40 minutes to actually get these mounted on the rig. Now, if you compare that to say a Husingvelt Ultimate, and it's the same with the, uh, with the sprints as well, those actually have their mounting surfaces on the outside here. So it's very easy to mount down into aluminum profile, move them forward and back and whatnot. So just a little bit cumbersome to get underneath here. Look, I mean, most, pe most people are mounting their pedals and then never touching them again anyway. So I don't think it's a massive problem or anything like that, but just one thing to be aware of. I would have liked to have seen the mounting tabs on the outside rather than underneath, just to make it a little bit easier to get to. So let's have a closer look at this brake pedal. Now, remembering again that the carbon fiber version underneath the carbon fiber shroud is exactly the same in its construction, other than of course the carbon fiber faceplate and pedal arm. So what we've done here is remove the LED module. As you can see, that's just literally an LED strip stuck down onto a little piece of metal here, which is bolted into the side. And then this is the optional laser cut steel shroud that we talked about earlier. Now, one thing to just mention with regards to that is it is quite sharp on the edges. Definitely not something that you wanna be snagging your feet or fingers on when you're working around the rig. So I would like to see them file those down. You can see, I can rub my finger over it. It's not, you know, it's not gonna just slice me or anything, but it could definitely be a little bit uh, smoother than it is. So those are removed here. Now we can see down internally the structure of the unit. So this is the main PCB with the processor. Now they do have some pretty funky stuff going on with the processing on these particular pedals. The highest resolution I've ever seen on a set of pedals as well at 20 bit, but we'll talk about that when we get into software and driving a little later on. But that is the PCB there. Now you may be concerned about dirt and debris, metal filings and so forth, dropping down from your feet or your shoes or your boots onto that PCB and creating a short. That is coated in a resin over the top of the PCB. So it will make it a little bit more difficult to do a home repair should you need to do so. Not that many people would be doing anything like that, but it should protect it from uh, any sort of moisture or debris falling on top and causing problems. So that is good to see. And a couple of other things of note here, if we flip around, you can see the 200 kilogram load cell, pretty standard type of load cell. And exactly like what we saw before, what happens is when you push the pedal down, it pushes down on this section of the pedals. That is connected to the rear half of the load cell. So as we push that down, the deflection in that piece of metal is measured by the strain gauge and that deflection is what's interpreted as force inside your sim racing title. So one half of the load cell is bolted to your rig via the cage here, and then the other half is impacted on by the amount of force that you put through the pedal. So another little interesting observation here, you can see a bit better inside here now with the shroud removed that adjustment for the pedal throw. Now, not quite so relevant with the brake pedal because obviously you're gonna be limited by the amount of compression available in the elastomers anyway, but it works exactly the same way on the throttle and clutch pedal. So what they say in their instructions is you simply loosen the uh, little nut here and that allows you to then slide the whole assembly forward and back to adjust your throw. Now, what I found on all uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pedals that we have here, that were all sent out at quite different times is that in all cases, there's a little notch in each position. So you can't actually slide it past the notch 
you have to actually take the entire pin out and then move it into the next position. Now that's not a problem if you've got the open design like this, but you can imagine if you've got this here and then this over the top as well, what happens is every time you pull that pin out, this entire assembly just drops down and then you can't get it aligned again because you can't get your fingers in there past the shroud. And if you compare that to say the Acertec Invicta and Forte pedals, for example, all that is is a little knob on the front that you uh, twist to adjust the pedal angle. And then you've got a, a threshold adjustment on the rear side, which you wind in and out to stipulate how far the pedal is able to move. So look, little details like that, once you've got them set up and you've got them configured how you like, you're probably not gonna wanna change them again anyway. So it's not a massive deal breaking issue, but little things like that in the design, you know, when, you, when you're looking at a set of pedals that cost the same as some of these other options, you gotta call these kinds of things out as points of comparison. So nothing wrong with the design there, but definitely not, uh, not making it easy for people who want to make adjustments there. Now we also need to talk about the elastomer stack itself as well. So the way this works is you've got a bearing system down in the pivot point down the bottom, no issues at all with binding or grinding or noise or squeaking, anything like that. The pedals have been absolutely fine in their operation. Uh, no noises whatsoever to speak of. In fact, they're very, very quiet in their operation. So pedal pivots down the bottom. You then got a clevis here with some what look to be either plastic or Teflon, probably Teflon spaces in there, which again contributes to the lack of noise. So it's good to see that they've included high quality materials like that to uh, minimize any sort of binding or noises or anything like that. So, I mean, when you look over the pedals, the materials that they're using, all those things are very good. There's no issues there. It's just the overall design I feel needs, it's, it's just a little under refined, I would say. But as we push the pedal down, and obviously we can't do it on the table, you guys will see in the footage. As we push that down, this elastomer stack compresses. We can then change those elastomers out if we have one of those optional upgrade kits that varies the amount of resistance in the pedal. And that entire assembly is then acting upon the load cell as we described earlier. Now, if you wanna change out the elastomers, very simple to do so. All you need to do is grab the included spanner to back off the retainer nut. So we just loosen that off the main one. You can see it can be a little bit tricky here. It's actually binding up on me. So I need to kind of get in there might even need to use a set of pliers. I don't like to do this, but sometimes it is necessary. So we're gonna grab onto the preload collar there and then grab our retainer nut and then just unbind it like so. Now that is important because it stops the pedal from adjusting itself while you're driving. So once we've backed off the preload on our elastomer stack, all we need to do is just push this forward. And again, it is a little bit tricky here with the stiffer elastomers, but the back piece here pushes out of this little retainer in the back lifts up like so. You've got your plastic spring perch there. You've got your elastomer stack with a washer in between each one. And you can simply just change out those elastomers to whatever configuration you want. Now, we haven't had it happen on these pedals and we did run these pedals on our test rig for a good number of weeks without any reliability issues with regards to the elastomers. What we have seen when we've used these same brand elastomers on some other pedals, my original Husing Vale Ultimates, once again, to use an example, uh, the BJ Sim Racing pedals that we tested as well. What happened was these elastomers did actually blow out over time. The softer they are, the, uh, the more tricky it is in that regard. So the stiffer ones are less likely to split. But one thing that you'll notice with this design is that we don't really have anything to restrict the amount of flex in those elastomers. So if you push the pedal hard enough, you are able to push those elastomers beyond their design tolerances. Now we've seen some clever designs from, uh, from a few different sim racing companies. Mecha Cup 1's come to mind. They have little aluminium cups which sit over each of the elastomers. What happens there is as the elastomers compress, those metal cups then make contact with each other and that limits the amount of flex which you're able to actually put through the elastomers themselves. And even though they use the same elastomers as what we're seeing here, at least in the example that we tested, we never had any reliability issues with those pedals. I ran them on my rig for about three or four months, I think it was, and Tom actually ran them on his rig for even longer than that. No reliability issues whatsoever. So I would like to see some sort of a cup system. Again, we didn't have any issues during our testing period, but I have had these elastomers, this same brand elastomer fail in the past with a design similar to this. So I think it's important to call that out. Now you might be thinking, well, hang on, that's exactly the same design as the Husing Vale Ultimate Plus pedal, and you'd be right there. By comparison, I personally haven't had any issues with the elastomers breaking with this new design. I did on the original Ultimates, which used the same elastomers as these, but with these newer design ones, haven't had any reliability issues. Let us know down in the comments below if you do happen to own some of these pedals, either the newer Sprints or the Ultimate Plus pedals with the new style elastomers. Have you had any failures with those or have they been reliable for you? That would be really interesting for people watching this video to know down in the comments. We'll set that guy aside again 
quickly for you. But yeah, look, I mean, in terms of the design, it's very straightforward, very simple, does what it does. But uh, look, a couple of other little observations as well, it does use USB-C on the side, it comes with a two meter long cable as well, which was nice. One other little nitpick that I did have as well, I feel like I'm tearing these pedals to shreds at the moment. Uh, well, most of my nitpicks are with regards to the design rather than the actual driving experience. So to stick around and watch that part of the video. One other little nitpick that I did have is when we plug the other pedals into this RJ connection here, the little cutout in the housing isn't actually big enough. So what happens is the pin sits right up against the top here and you can't get your finger in there to actually release it. You have to get in there with a screwdriver and actually release it if you want to remove the pedals. And again, not going to be an issue once you've got them mounted, assuming that you're not the sort of person that's swapping pedals all the time, but something that did frustrate me. And uh, yeah, something again, I think, you know, attention to detail thing could definitely be improved in the future. But overall, a nice solid construction. All of this is steel in case you're wondering, apart from just the pedal arm. And I can show that to you quickly now. You can see the magnet sticks to everything except the arm itself, and then it will also stick to the plate there too, or the pedal pad. So that is steel as well. But yeah, look, overall, a solid construction. Just a couple of things in the overall design which I think would make it a little bit easier to work on and a little bit more reliable. Okay, so we've bolted the pedal plate onto our Track Racer TR120 cockpit. Now this, if you've seen our review, is a very, very solid and rigid cockpit. So uh, no issues with flex in the pedal plate at all. Gives us a perfect uh, platform to test these pedals out on. So let's start off here talking about the initial impressions of pedal feel, things like that, flex in the pedals, those kinds of important things. And then we'll get in and take a look at the software. So starting with the throttle pedal. Now we did test out with obviously the uh, aluminium and steel version of these pedals as as well as the carbon fiber ones you're seeing here. Now there is some flex in all three of these pedals that comes in the form of not only flex forward and backwards, but also some twist as well. Now, it wasn't super noticeable in driving compared to the steel version. I think if you buy these carbon fiber pedals, you're probably not even gonna notice it at all when driving, but it is there and you can definitely notice it if you start twisting it around with your hand and things like that. You guys can see for yourself there, if I push on the corner of the pedal pad, there's quite a lot of flex there. If I push in the middle, I can still feel it when I hit that, uh, that hard bump stop, but not really something that I think is of concern at all on the throttle pedal. Likewise with the clutch as well, there's some flex there. If I push on the outside edge, you can definitely feel it, but again, not really a concern in the context of pedals that don't have a whole lot of mechanical resistance behind them. On the brake pedal, it is a slightly different story. I can definitely feel a little bit more sponginess in this brake, even with the same exact configurations that we had with the steel and aluminium version. There definitely is some flex going on there in the pedal arm itself, which is noticeable. Again, I don't think if you were to buy these pedals and you didn't have that point of reference that we have with the other set of pedals, you probably wouldn't notice it, but it's definitely less than ideal there. So yeah, look, I, I think given how much extra the carbon fiber costs on top of the steel and aluminium version, you know, for that reason alone, I probably wouldn't recommend going the carbon fiber version. I mean, we've already highlighted some of the other concerns that I had with the carbon fiber, but that is definitely, you know, it's something that is objectively taking away from the performance of the pedals that you're paying extra for. So, you know, you need to consider that. So yeah, there's a bit of flex there. It is what it is, you guys can see from the footage for yourselves. Now we did have one other issue with the carbon fiber shroud around the uh, brake pedal as we mentioned earlier in the review too. So that is resolved just by filing off that little bit as we showed you earlier. But again, on something that costs this much money, you really shouldn't be having to do things like filing to, uh, you know, to alleviate issues like that. It should come quality controlled from the factory so you don't have problems like that. But look, in terms of the actual pedal feel, I'm actually really impressed with the pedal. So I don't want to sound like I'm being overly negative here. Uh, they're definitely on the better side of load cell pedals that I've tested over the years. So let's talk about the observations there too. So throttle pedal, a nice progressive feel in the throttle pedal. It's actually one of the better feeling throttles I think I've ever tested. One of the things I often say in my uh, pedal reviews is that I'm kind of you know indifferent when it comes to throttle feel, but this has a really nice progressive feel. It gives you a good amount of feeling that lets you know where you are in the pedal stroke. So you can kind of determine some uh, some force-based muscle memory as well as just position, which is nice. So I did find when driving with these pedals, I did, you know, I didn't have any issues with throttle control. I don't normally have any issues with throttle control on other pedals either, but I did actually noticeably enjoy the experience using this throttle pedal over others that I've tested. So yeah, impressed with the throttle. There's a good amount of adjustment there too. You can increase the preload on that spring as we saw earlier, should you wish to do so. You can adjust the throw there too. There's heaps of throw available there 
at the default settings. If anything, it's a little bit more than what I'm used to with the Asiatek Invicta pedals that I run on my daily driver rig. So it did actually require a little bit of resetting my muscle memory to uh, get my head around the throttle, but it does have that really nice feel to it. Clutch as well, very, very, very nice feeling. So it's got that two stage mechanism. You can see flicking up there as I get towards the uh, end of the pedal stroke. And what that does is it simulates the bite point in the clutch where the flywheel is connecting through to the drive line. So what it gives you is a nice defined threshold point there where you can simulate that engagement point. And yeah, it works, it works really nicely. Again, you can adjust the preload there as well or swap out the springs if you wish to do so. But by default, that has a really nice feel to it. And uh, yeah, again, I don't, I don't see any reason why anybody would be disappointed with the feeling of that clutch. Maybe you don't like that two-stage feeling, but what I like about this is that it isn't over the top. It isn't like a massive clunk. Uh, we've had that with some other pedals that we've tested. Usually it is adjustable, but on some, it's so hard to get that bite point because the pedal just either wants to be in one position or the other, but this is really nice in its design. So yeah, impressed overall with the feeling of the throttle and the clutch pedal. Brake pedal, very stiff if you're not used to a stiff pedal by default. This configuration that we have right now with regards to the Elastoma stack is the default one that comes packaged with the pedals. If you do wanna change that, you will be up for that additional cost of those extra pedal kits that we talked about earlier. But I think that's got a good amount of resistance there. And uh, look, it does, it does feel like pushing up against a rubber block. It definitely doesn't have the definition that you get with some hydraulic pedals that we've tested in the past. But the one thing that I always look for in a brake pedal, and if you guys have watched our other pedal reviews, you're probably sick of hearing me saying this, but there is a very nicely, clearly defined threshold point there where you can brake to your maximum intended brake force and then modulate around that with ease. So while it doesn't quite have the definition of a hydraulic pedal, it definitely gives you everything that you need there in terms of being communicative to give you uh, the ability to modulate your braking and drive consistently and quickly. So yeah, objectively, when it comes to all the things that I look for in a set of pedals, I'm happy with the way these feel. I'm not happy with the amount of flex that we have in the carbon fiber compared to the aluminum steel version. But look, in terms of other things around flex and movement, there's no slop in the pedals from side to side or front to back. You can see they return to their zero position very nicely. There's no issues with dead zone or anything like that. So yeah, I'd say objectively, they're giving me all the things in terms of pedal feel that I would expect of a uh, pedal set of this kind of price point. So that is a good thing. Now, the other thing that we need to talk about here is these little heel cups. Now, I've never used a set of pedals that have anything like this before. I've always had the freedom of moving my feet around as much as I like. And I do actually have a habit of resting my foot a little bit offset from center where I should be. And that can actually impact the muscle memory from your leg. Because you want to be, when you're braking especially, you want to be pushing from your leg primarily rather than just sort of flexing your ankle. You can use your ankle for that kind of fine modulation, but you want the majority of the force to be coming from your leg and your thigh. So what I found with using these cups is it does actually locate me a little bit better. It does seem to actually aid with muscle memory for me personally. So I'm actually a big fan of these. I actually really like the way they function. Now, if you're the sort of person that is doing a lot of heel toe driving, if you're doing a lot of pedal dancing and moving your feet around, you may not get along with these. You do of course have the option to just not install the cups. So you don't necessarily need to have them on there. But look, I actually get along well with them. I'm doing mostly GT style driving where I'm left foot braking anyway. But yeah, I've actually been pleasantly surprised with how well these actually help me to uh, keep my feet in the right position position and uh, you know just add that little bit in muscle memory. Now you'll see the LED strips operating here as well as we said earlier on in the review you can't really see them when you're driving anyway obviously if you're in a dark room and the only light in the room is just the screens in front of you then you will get a bit of a sort of I guess general glow around the rig but you can't actually see the LED strips past your feet which I expected and that is the case for the throttle and the brake. Me personally I cannot see any reason why somebody would spend extra money to have that but you know, it's, it's an option if you want it. It is kind of cool. It does do exactly what they say it does. But let's jump into the software now. I'll show you exactly how those lights work as well as how we can figure, control and calibrate these pedals. Okay, so let's run through the Venom Pit Stop software quickly now for you guys so you know exactly what to do here. Now, a couple of important things to point out here. Uh, the calibration is actually flashed to the EEPROM on the pedals themselves. So once you've set everything up, if you're happy with it, you don't have to go back in and uh, open up this software every single time you're running the pedals. It does also mean that that calibration is carried across into any SIM title that you're running as well. Now, the reason I'm calling that out is because that wasn't a very common thing, even just sort of like a year ago now. Uh, we first saw it in the Husingvelt Smart Control 
uh, module that came out with the newer Sprint pedals and then later on the Ultimate Plus pedals. Uh, the Acer Tech Invicta pedals had it as well. And then a lot of the new pedals that we've been testing recently all have it as well. So just it just makes things a little bit more simple when it comes to setting things up, particularly iRacing, for example, where you have to actually calibrate the pedals inside the game. All you then need to do is just push each pedal to 100%, back it off again, and save the calibration in iRacing, and it will take on the output signal from the pedal. So essentially what's happening is, as far as the PC is concerned, the calibration or the calibrated signal is what's actually being outputted by the pedals, rather than that signal being modified by the software in real time on the PC. So that is one very important good point with these pedals. Let's just quickly run you through everything else that's here as well. So we've got the option to check and update our firmware right here in the software. Uh, the carbon fiber pedals that we got were actually the latest firmware, but the aluminum and steel ones we did actually have to update the firmware on. Very simple process, we just check online, it detected a new firmware, we hit flash, waited about a minute or so. Very simple process, didn't have to push any buttons to enter bootloader mode or anything crazy like that, like we've seen with some other products. So yeah, all very straightforward, very user friendly. Moving on down to this section here now, We've got settings for being able to invert the pedal signals. So some older titles sometimes require that or more arcade style titles. Uh, we've got the option here to flicker the brake LED beyond a certain threshold. So if we click that on, you can see if I push the pedal down, the RGB LEDs start to flicker beyond 90% threshold. What I normally do is brake to about 80%. So I'm actually gonna set that to 80 for now. There we go. And now when I brake to 80% pressure, that's gonna start blinking. So we can set our LED intensity level here as well from zero to 100% for brightness adjustment. And then we can also use the ABS telemetry data coming out of your SIM if it outputs that signal to make the brake light flash when the ABS kicks in as well, which you may or may not find useful. But again, you can't actually see the LED strip when you're driving. So the only time that may be useful for you is if you drive in a really dark room and you can actually see that light spilling out around the rig to give you that visual indication. But it is a good idea to have it. It does mean that you've got that point of reference without having to take your eyes off off the road provided that you can actually see the light coming out from it. So if we go across to light management quickly now as well, beyond just those functions that we've just taken a look at, we can also sync this up with a Philips Hue bridge. So it's obviously using Philips Hue lighting internally here. That will require that you purchase a Philips Hue bridge though if you wanted to do that. So we can link it up with that and make it do all kinds of extra funky things. But because they don't include the Philips Hue bridge in the purchase price, we're not gonna go through that for you guys today. If you wanna see it, let us know and we can explain in the comments or maybe we'll add it on the website a little bit later on. But let's get on down into the more important stuff now, starting with calibration. So we're gonna click on the calibrate all button here. And then this brings up some instructions for calibrating each pedal. So it tells us to push the accelerator to the maximum and then release it completely. You'll see some numbers on the right hand side here as we do this. Now, interestingly, you'll notice the numbers go from 2400 through to about 6,400, depending on how hard you push that pedal. Remember, it is a load cell. So even if we push that pedal beyond the full scale deflection there, we will actually measure a little bit of additional force on that pedal. Now, interestingly here, uh, their literature does say that the microprocessor used here allows them to measure a resolution of 20 bit, which is actually over a million points of resolution or points of measurement throughout the stroke of the pedal, which is just crazy high. I mean, I'm used to driving with either 10 bit or 16 bit pedals. 16 bit is just a little bit over 65,000, I think 65,535 points of resolution, if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, and, you know, I can't tell the difference personally between a million or 65. 000. You've got to remember, you know, we're talking about 65,000 points of resolution in a movement that small. So if you can feel the difference, let us know in the comments below, but I certainly can't. But this number here, I believe, is some sort of a, uh, a derived number rather than the raw data coming in. Now, it does say in their literature, again, I'm just going to read this verbatim here, uh, coupled with a 48 megahertz microcontroller, a computing power that allows us to process the signal and interpolate the response curves on floating point numbers, all of this in near real time with a response time of one millisecond where the competition only offers linear interpolation of integer numbers. Now look, honestly, when I'm driving you guys, I, I can't tell the difference. I'm just gonna say it. Maybe you guys will. Again, if you do own these pedals, let us know down in the comments if you have noticed a difference compared to any other pedals. But it's a cool thing to have. I'm not gonna deny that. So we've pushed the pedal to the maximum and the minimum. We're gonna click done. And then that takes us through to our brake calibration. So I'm gonna push the brake to the maximum amount of force that I would ever wanna use under maximum braking in the car. Now this is a subjective thing for me. I like to push to the threshold point that I described earlier and then a little bit further just to allow me to modulate. So about there is right for me. Click done and then exactly the same thing again as we did with the throttle 
with our clutch pedal and we click done. So now when I push the pedal all the way to the maximum, I should get 100%. Likewise, when I push the brake to my threshold point, I should get around about 80%. And you can see there I'm fluctuating between about 78 and 82%. I am kind of cheating because I'm looking at the numbers in real time for a bit of a feedback loop, but you get the idea there. And then I can modulate my braking pressure to 100 or down, and that is all fine. And then the clutch, we should get 100 through to zero. Now you will notice if I rest my foot on the brake there, I am getting a little bit of braking force inside the game. Obviously we don't want to have that. And that is what our lower dead zone adjustment is for. So I'm going to rest my foot on the brake just like that. And then I'm going to increase my dead zone to the point where I no longer get any reading. So yeah, about there feels good. I can rest my foot on the pedal and then if I start to intentionally push it, I start to get a reading. So that's fine. We do have a high dead zone adjustment there for the brake pedal. I can't really see anybody ever actually needing that adjustment on the brake. But for the clutch, for example, if you were to push it to 100% mechanical deflection and you weren't quite getting to 100% movement in the, uh, in the graph here, then you could increase the high dead zone likewise with the throttle as well. And that just allows you to make sure that you're reaching absolutely 100% input inside the game. Likewise, if you're resting your foot on these pedals and you're realizing that you're getting a little bit of input there, you can increase the dead zone just like what we did with the brake. But in my particular case, that is absolutely fine. There's no slop in these pedals at all, as I mentioned earlier, which means that we don't need to account for that in our lower dead zone, which is good. Now, another really valuable thing that we can do here as well as save our pedal profiles. So say you wanna set up different profiles for different types of cars or different sims, you can do that and then just quickly switch between them. If we click on load curves here, you'll see these are a proprietary container at least but it's probably just some sort of a text file internally. If I right click on that and go open with notepad, it looks to me just like a standard kind of I and I file like you would find with most things. So you can adjust your calibration in there if you needed to, but yeah, I don't see any reason why you would want to do that. So yeah, it's just a file container that is proprietary for the software. And then lastly, we do also have the ability to set non-linear pedal curves here too. So say for example, you want to have a non-linear throttle so you can drag that down, have the throttle come on a little bit less aggressively and then ramp up towards the end. You can see now as I push the pedal down, it kind of stalls around that midpoint and then as I get to the end, it starts to accelerate very quickly. So if you've got a really high powered car and you're finding you're getting wheel spin on corner exit, you can account for that in your throttle map. Or for example, if you've got something a little bit less powerful like a uh, MX-5, a cup car, skip barber, something like that, and you wanna get on the throttle as hard as you possibly can, as quickly as possible, then you can do it like this and that way the pedal is going up to 100% much, much, much faster. So you can tweak this however you like. Same deal with the clutch as well. You can adjust this to match the threshold point that you feel mechanically in the pedal. And obviously you can adjust that to suit whichever type of car you may be driving to make sure you get the perfect launch every time. So very useful with regards to the clutch and the throttle. With the brake, I'll be honest with you guys, I've never found a non-linear brake response to be useful for me. What I find is I just keep it linear and regardless of the car I'm driving, generally I adapt within sort of three or four laps anyway. But a lot of people actually do like to run non-linear brake curves. So that's just me subjectively. And you do of course have the option to do that here. So I'm just gonna quickly load back in the default linear profile. And there we go. It's interesting that they don't have any sort of drop down menu here with some preset curves. That is one thing that we see in a lot of other pedal software these days, but you know, it is what it is. I don't think you necessarily need that. You can fine tune and tweak things to your heart's content here. Okay, so time to head out on track now. As always with our pedal reviews, we're running the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car, the 992 around Imola in iRacing. Now, the reason we choose this car and track combination, uh, a rear engine car with no aids. So we don't have any ABS, we don't have any traction control. What that means being rear engine is that the car pendulums really, really easily. So it's very sensitive under brakes, exactly what you need for testing a set of pedals. This track as well has a lot of off camber, a lot of weird braking zones and all kinds of things which are really sort of easy to upset the car and get out of shape. So a good combination for testing, same combination we've been running for about 18 months now for all our pedal reviews just to keep things consistent. Now in terms of the pedals themselves, we're running the default configuration here without spending any extra money on elastomer swap outs or anything like that. I wanted to give you a good baseline here for performance, let you know what I feel about the pedals in their default configuration. Then we'll have a play around with the springs and let you know where I end up. Now of course all that stuff is very subjective, so I'll do my very best here to describe exactly what I'm feeling and you can decide for yourselves whether that lines up with what you like. Now one thing I will say just as we head out of the pits here, don't uh, don't base what you're looking for in a set of pedals on the pedals that you have currently. For me I like to have a relatively short throw 
in my brake pedal, not everybody's gonna like that. What is most important is that you've got a good clearly defined threshold point where you can brake consistently to that point and modulate around that point for maximum consistency and speed. So cold tires to begin with, I gotta say immediately the thing that stands out to me before we really get into a heavy braking zone is just how how nice the uh, the throttle pedal does feel. It's it, it's it's a really progressive kind of feeling compared to what I'm used to. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm not normally big on sort of I, I've always I've always sort of said a throttle is a throttle and it doesn't really matter too much to me. But I am really liking the feeling that I'm getting through this, and it does allow me to modulate my throttle very nicely and ease it on. So as we get a little bit more heat into these tires, remember again we are running the default. 100 kilogram force configuration here. No issues at all with modulating so far. A little bit of a touch here at the 50 mark, get it turned in, ease off, a little bit of throttle. Back on the brakes, get it turned around, back on the throttle again, ease it on. A little bit of a short shift there up the hill just to stop the back end from stepping out. Now we're gonna be braking about the 80 mark here. No lock up there, even though I'm on cold tires, which actually surprises me. So the pedals do feel immediately very familiar to me. I'm used to driving with the Acertec Invicta hydraulic pedals on my daily driver. And while these pedals do feel quite different, well, the brake, I'm describing the brake pedal here, the brake pedal does feel quite different to me the amount of actual mechanical resistance here is very similar. So I'd say the Invicta pedal is a little bit more communicative in the hydraulic nature of it, although it's not a massive difference here. But I normally brake to about 70 to 80 kilograms of braking force. And that suits the 100 kilogram default configuration absolutely perfectly, because I like to brake to about 80% braking pressure generally to stop the car from locking up, depending again on what I'm driving, of course. And the thing that's standing out to me most here before we really pick up the pace is the fact that I haven't left any black lines on the track at all. I haven't locked up. And yeah, they just, they feel instantly very, very familiar. So we already described the feeling of the clutch pedal. So we don't really know, need to go into any more detail on that, I don't think. It's got that, um, nice threshold point that we described earlier. But I'm gonna pick up the pace now, we've got a couple of laps in. On the pedals, I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive with my braking here. All right, let's pick up the pace now. But yeah, I've gotta say, I mean, there were, there were some little well, maybe not little. Some, there were some pretty serious nitpicks that we had when it came to the, uh, the quality control and the actual design of some of the hardware. But I've got to say the actual driving experience, which of course is what's most important alongside with reliability, is very, very good here. As I often say in my pedal reviews, I'm feeling all the things that I need to feel. I sound like a broken record saying that, but I, f I really do feel like at this kind of price point, a lot of it really does just come down to subjective things. There are gonna be certain qualities of some pedals that some people like over others. A little bit of a lock up there. I did just miss my threshold a little bit there. I was a little bit too aggressive on the brake. But I think that's the very first lock up that I've even had. So we'll complete this lap here. Modulating in through a little bit more brake just to get the rear end to rotate. Back on the throttle as early as we can. Breaking at about the 50 again. Late apex here, gonna get back on the throttle. Get the car rotating. There we go. Yeah, I think from a driver's perspective, the default 100 kilogram configuration is giving me all the things that I subjectively like to feel. And I'd say objectively all the things that you need to feel to drive in a fast and consistent manner, which is pretty much all you can ask out of a set of load cell pedals. Again, as I said earlier, really enjoying the feeling of the throttle as well. It really does give me a nice progressive feel to establish some muscle memory around to beyond just the uh, ankle position. And I haven't lost the back end even once. 
So definitely confidence inspiring there. So let's just bring this around. We're going to break at the apex on the downhill here. Again, very easy to lose the back end of the car down the hill here as we're kind of turning, turn in, hit the apex, back on the throttle nice and early, out wide, cut in nice and tight here. A little bit of a slide, but nothing major. And yeah, normally when I jump in this car with a new set of pedals, it takes me a good couple, and you guys can see for yourselves in some of our other pedal reviews, it takes me quite a number of laps to really kind of get my head around things and, uh, and understand exactly what's going on, how things are working. You can see my lock up from the previous lap there, but I did still make the apex. But yeah, really enjoying this. So what I'm gonna do now is have a little bit of a play around with some of the other elastomer inserts for the brake, see whether I can dial it in a little bit more. The one thing that I am missing here, and again, this is gonna be a very subjective thing, but I do miss having that initial uptake or that pad to rotor uptake that we can simulate with a insert spring. Uh, a lot of other pedals these days do have that. Some people aren't gonna like that. Some people prefer to remove that, but I would like to have that. So I'm gonna play around with the springs quickly now and uh, we'll come back in a minute and let you know where I land and uh, what I subjectively like and dislike and what I objectively feel it brings to the experience of using these pedals. Okay, so I had a good play around with all the various different spring options which are available. Remembering again that they are additional accessories which will cost you extra over the cost of the pedals. Look, for me, subjectively, I was most happy with the default setting which I expected. What I actually landed on was replacing one of the hard inserts in the 100 kilogram configuration with one of the softer ones. And that just gave me that little bit more sensation of initial uptake where the uh, where the pad is coming up to the surface of the rotor before you actually start to brake. That is just something that I subjectively like. I did try simulating that with the spring insert with and without the little internal spacer too. I just found there was a little bit too much traveling there. It added a little bit too much vagueness in the pedal for my personal preference. The softer setting I found just felt a little bit spongy overall, just lacked that definition, that clearly defined threshold point, which we discussed earlier. And honestly, the hard setting was just too hard for me. It, it just, again, lacked definition to me personally, just because, you know, I had to push so hard with my leg to really get that feeling of definition. But of course, depending on how strong your legs are would determine where that threshold sat for you. But for me personally, that 100 kilogram default setting was absolutely right. So what I would recommend, obviously you do need to consider shipping costs. If you're gonna have to pay extra for shipping a second time, it may be worth picking up those additional spring just to play around with yourself. But I think the majority of people are gonna be happy with that default 100 kilogram configuration. So conclusions on the Venom Atrex pedals. Now I feel like they they provide a very good driving experience overall. I don't have any complaints when it comes to the actual usage other than just those few reliability concerns that we highlighted earlier on in the video. Now, my point of comparison when it comes to pedals around this price point, uh, generally speaking, the Husingvelt Ultimate, the Husingvelt Sprint, and the uh, Asetek Invicta and Forte pedals. The reason why I compare to those specifically is I feel like at each one of the price brackets that we're kind of looking at around these pedals, those pedals out of the pedals that we've tested here at Boosted Media at least provide the best value for money in terms of both the driving experience and the overall build quality. Now there are things to like and dislike about all those pedals and there are some things that I'm sure people will prefer about these pedals, particularly aesthetically compared to some of those other pedal sets. But from a driving experience, reliability and build quality perspective, those four pedal sets are my baseline. So in comparing these to those pedals, I've got to say these just feel more like a first generation product. Whether we're looking at the steel and aluminium version or the carbon fiber version, version. Both of them have a lot of little niggly issues, some of them not quite so little when it comes to just the build quality, uh, adjustability, things like that. Things aren't quite as straightforward with these pedals as they are with the Husingvelt pedals. There is more adjustability available here, at least out of the box, than what we have with the Acetec pedals, particularly when you consider that the Acetec pedals don't have any adjustment from side to side. So there is a lot more versatility in these pedals, but I guess the best way to summarize the experience both using and owning these pedals, making adjustments and whatnot, is they feel more like a first first generation product, particularly if you compare them to their Husingvelt equivalents. Now, if you compare to the Husingvelt sprints, those are a generally softer pedal. You can calibrate them to feel quite hard, but they max out at around that 70 kilograms of pedal force mark, whereas you're gonna get away with a lot more pedal force with these ones. So that alone would be a reason to consider these over the Husingvelt sprints, for example. If we were to step up to something like the Ultimate, look, honestly, the build quality there, the adjustability, and just the overall refinement in that product is a lot higher than what we're seeing 
seeing here. Even though these do look really cool, they just don't quite have that same refinement. When we reviewed those Ultimate Plus pedals in particular, they're just such a well-refined product from things like mounting adjustments, the driving feel, the fit and finish, the you know smooth beveled edges, no sharp edges anywhere to speak of. Just all those little details that are important for sim racing are all present on those pedals. And some of those are definitely lacking, whether you're looking at the steel and aluminum version or the carbon fiber version here. If you're at a price point where you're sort of between the sprints and the ultimates, or maybe you've been looking at a set of Acer Tech Forte pedals and not quite happy with the amount of adjustment that's offered by them, for example, then I think that there is definitely a place for these in the market. And look, I don't have any issues recommending these pedals from a driver's perspective. I just feel like there are better options on the market in terms of build quality and ease of use, adjustability, and all those things at around about this same sort of price point, which makes it a difficult product to recommend compared to some of those other options that we've tested in the past. But I think if you buy a set of these pedals, you won't be disappointed with them. From a driving perspective, they are very good. Now, in comparing these to each other, look, other than aesthetics, I see absolutely no reason to go with the carbon fiber version. I actually feel like they're a step down in quality from the aluminum version. I mean, just to give you the example here again, if we twist on these pedal pads here, you can see the entire arm is twisting down here. Now, we didn't have any issues with breakage, and I am a very heavy footed breaker, so, you know, I, I don't anticipate there being a lot of issues with failure with these, but you can see just how much they twist with my bare hands there on the throttle and the brake in particular. And, you know, there's no flex at all present on the aluminum and steel version. So that alone does, I mean, look, it's not something that if you if you owned both sets and you switch between them like what we did, then yes, absolutely, you do notice a little bit more flex in the pedals, a little bit more kind of squishiness in the carbon fiber version compared to the aluminum version. But I don't think that if you were to buy these, you would notice that they feel squishy. It's only if you do a direct back-to-back -back comparison like what we did here. But yeah, look, I honestly, I don't see any reason to go with the carbon fiber version just other than if you like the aesthetics. These shrouds, as we saw earlier, are very flimsy. And look, they just they just don't have that high quality feel that I was hoping they would have for the price point. I just think that this is the better product overall. Likewise, with the aluminium version, you can definitely save yourself some money by not bothering with the uh, steel plates which go over the top. They are ultimately just an aesthetic upgrade. They're not offering anything in terms of performance increase or anything like that. So I don't see the need to spend the money unless you want to spend the money to get the looks. They do have quite sharp edges as well being laser cut. They haven't been filed down or anything like that. So yeah, no reason to spend the extra money. Likewise with the LEDs as well, I don't really feel like they offer anything of value to the driving experience simply because you can't really see them properly when you're driving. Anyway, you may disagree with me on that. If you're driving in a dark room and you can sort of see that general glow as we described earlier in the video, you may get benefit in that. But yeah, look, it's, it's extra money that you just don't need to spend. You're gonna get a very similar driving experience overall without spending that money. Now, in terms of adjustability, I do feel like they've nailed the default configurations that they include inside the box, which is obviously a good thing, means that a lot of people probably won't need to spend extra money on other elastomer kits, springs and whatnot to get them to feel the way they like. I found for me, the 100 kilogram default brake configuration did feel the best out of the various different options. As you guys saw earlier on in the video, I did end up swapping out one of the elastomers for the weaker one, just to give that little bit more sensation of uptake. But the default 100 kilogram of force brake configuration did feel subjectively good to me. And I think that most people will be able to adapt to that without too many issues. So I definitely don't feel like that's gonna be a necessary upgrade for most people. The throttle and the clutch do both have a really nice progressive feel to them too. And that two stage effect feeling that you get through the clutch is one of the better ones that I've felt out of all the pedals that we've tested here. So again, driving experience is very, very good with these pedals. I just feel like there is some refinement that is necessary to justify the price point compared to some of the other options that are available on the market. And I think if they can nail those things, then they have a very, very, very competitive set of pedals on their hands. So really hope that today's video has helped you guys out. Let us know down in the comments below if you own a set of these pedals, how your experience has been. Did you come across some of the same issues that we did in our testing? Has everything been all good? good for you, or maybe you have come across another issue that we didn't mention here in today's video. So let us know what your experience is like down below. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching guys. Leave a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and we will see you again very soon. Bye.